Hello everyone, welcome back to Code with Nomi and today we're going to learn how to build a fully functional app. We're going to implement authentication system and a messaging system in React Native and for that we're going to use Firebase. We'll be using Expo Router, latest Native Win 4, vector icons, Loti animations and so much more. On top of that we'll be also making our app responsive so that the UI looks good on all the devices. So if you are new to Expo Router or React Native then this is a good start to master your skills in React Native and uh, with that said let me show you the demo of the app. So when you start the application the first thing you'll see is the sign in and sign up pages and I'm currently running the app on iOS and Android devices so you get the idea of how the app is responsive on both the devices and on the sign up page I've already implemented the keyboard avoiding view so if we have a lot of inputs on a screen that won't be a problem our keyboard will not be covering the inputs so you can scroll through all the inputs so let's go ahead and create a new account John Wick Wick at the rate gmail.com and let's create a password and for the last field we're going to add a link of the image i've already opened an image so let me just copy and paste the link for that and hit sign up okay so we are signed up and the first thing we'll see is a list of all the users in the application and on the header if we click on our icon we will see a context menu where we'll see two options to visit our profile or to sign out the application so let me sign into my other account and see how the messaging system works let's put the password and hit sign in and we're logged in so we'll get all the users in our application so here you will notice one thing we also see the last message and the time of the message that's because if you already have conversed with the user you will see the last messages and the date of the message but if you haven't you will see a suggestion saying hi to start the conversation so if I open a user we will see the message history with that user and if we have a lot of messages in a chat history and we click on the type message this will push all the messages to show the input on top of the keyboard. So let's go to our new user and send some messages. Uh, let's say hi. And you will notice as soon as I click on the send icon this will update the message in both the apps. So we got the message in message history and we also got updated our chat list. And we are seeing the last message and the date of the message. So let's click on it and we got the message history. Now let's send another message from John Wick. Hey man how are you? And as soon as I click on the send icon, this gets updated on both the apps. So let's send some more messages. Uh, let's say what's going on. And if I send, this appears on the other side. Um, let's say getting bored at home. What about you? And hit send. And we got the message. So let's reply same here let's send an emoji as well um, let's send this one and hit send and we got our message so this is how our chat system is working and we can go back and see all the other users and we can chat with them i've also implemented the keyboard avoiding view and it works great so let me sign in with another account and show you what i mean let's sign in with tom add password and hit sign in the keyboard avoiding view works really great in sign in and sign up but one thing i really like is when we are in a chat where we have a lot of messages and if we click on the input it will push all the messages and it will still show the input on top of the keyboard i really like how smooth it does that and it's also implemented on the android side so if you open the same chat and if I click on the input, it will push all the messages and still show the input. And the last thing to show is this context menu which appears on top of everything. I haven't implemented the profile part uh, which I will leave up to you guys. 
so this was a brief overview of how this application is going to work and if you are interested to build this application we'll be building this application together and if you find this video helpful do like the video and subscribe the channel because this really helps the channel to grow and uh, without further wasting any time let's get started and build this application so first of all you need to go to expo website and on the sidebar you will see the installation tab just click on it and here you'll find the quickest way to install an expo app with tabs and if you scroll down you will see a manual setup process as well but we're not going to follow this because this is very lengthy we will stick with the quick method so let's just copy this command and open the terminal let's paste it here and this is going to ask us about the application name let's name it firebase chat and this is going to install the application for us so let's wait okay it's finished now we can close the terminal and open the project into vs code i've already done that while it was being installed so let me just drag the vs code here let's make it full screen let's also drag my ios simulator and uh, let's adjust them both in one window like this now first of all what we're gonna do is run our application to see how it looks like so let's open the terminal and write the command npm run ios this is going to run the ios version of our app and here is the app directory of our application we have app assets components and the constants We'll probably remove all of this code because we're going to build this application from scratch. So let's just wait. Okay, so the application is running and as you can see we have two tabs at the bottom. And if I click on this icon, this should open a model. So this is what you get when you install a new Expo router app. So let's remove all of this code. So let's select all of these tabs and remove them and let's keep our assets and we're not gonna use the components all of these components so let's just remove all of them and uh, let's keep our constants for now so let me create the first component in app folder and the expo router works on file based routes so if you are not familiar with the expo router then i'll suggest to watch my other video on expo router so let's just refresh this error will go away okay so we have our first component and before we start designing this component we need to install native wind to design our application so let's go to native wind and native wind basically uses tailwind css and we're going to install the native wind version 4 which is the latest version so here is their documentation and you need to click on expo router in the sidebar and we're going to follow all of this to install it and set up this into our application let's stop our server and uh, first we need to install all of these libraries let's just copy this and paste it into the terminal and then we need to install this command and because i am not using react native cli so i don't need to do this then we're gonna run this command to create a tailwind configuration file so let's just copy this command and paste it into the terminal and this has created a tailwind configuration file we're going to change the contents of this file so uh, let me just copy the content and the preset property let's copy this and replace this into our configuration file and this content property basically holds a list of all the directories where we can use the tailwind classes so for now it's pointing to the app directory but we're going to use the tailwind classes into our components folder as well so let's just copy this and change this to components as well and let's save this and then let's see what's the next step so next we're gonna create a global.css file into our root directory and paste this inside it so let's create a file global.css and paste the contents let's save this and let's see what's the next step next we're gonna add the Babel preset and here we see the presets and the plugins and I think we need to add both of them so let's just copy the presets property and go to our Babel configuration 
and replace the presets here and uh, we will need to update the plugins as well we already have router slash babble so let's add the plugin for reanimated okay that's done okay next we're gonna modify our metro dot configuration file and if you won't see this file into your project just run this command and expo will create it for you so let's see what we're gonna change let's go to metro dot configuration file okay so this is the file and we need to import with native wind component like this and we need to export the configuration using this so let's copy this and paste this here and this should point to the global.css file that you just created so next we're gonna add a layout component inside our app folder and we're gonna import the global.css file so inside app directory let's create a root layout file and let's create a functional component and inside this component we're gonna copy the slot component and we're gonna export it a slot component is basically uh think of it as it it renders your children properties so because we're using it in a layout component this is going to render all the children in that layout so let's just export that and we are also using our global.css file here so that's done now let's start our project and see if we have successfully implemented native wind let's wait for it okay we see some warnings uh, let's run it on ios let's press i and it's building and we got this error uh, unable to resolve slot maybe we need to create a layered function and then return a slot from it so let's create a layout function and here we will just simply return the slot component like this and let's save this and reload okay so that won't fix our problem uh, let's just undo all of this and just use that in here so inside our view we'll just render the slot component like this and let's save this and let's reload um, same error again maybe we need to import it like this and uh, let's reload okay so that error is gone but now we see another error and that's because the expo router doesn't like the version of reanimated installed into our project it requires a different version of reanimated and when we ran the project we saw a warning suggesting uh, run this command to fix this issue so what we're gonna do is copy this command and run this into our project and this is going to fix the situation so let's wait a bit okay it's done now let's run our project now hopefully everything should work fine and we don't see any warning or error let's run it on ios and it's building so the application is running and we don't see any error that's a good sign and on the top we see a text coming from our index component so let's go to our index component and it says home uh, we need to add a little padding top so that we can see the text clearly uh, let's add a padding top of 40 and save this now we can see the home now we should be able to use the tailwind classes for our components so let's add a class name of background red 200 and let's save this and it didn't work um, maybe we missed something uh, let's go to our layout file okay yeah we need to import the css file i think we mistakenly removed this when we were fighting with the slot component so let's import it so when i save this you see the background color changes that means our tailwind class is working now so now let's make this text bigger using text3 excel class now the text is bigger now let's also move it to center using text center class 
and it's working so now we no longer need this style property so let's remove all of this and we can add a padding top using padding top of uh, let's say 20 so the classes are working now and we have successfully implemented the latest version of native wind into our project so this is it for this video and in the next video we're going to implement authentication into our project so see you in the next video